Hey everyone, I'm Marley, and welcome to another episode of Planet Zero. So we left off the last video talking about the rise of industry, the growth of the middle class and its effect on air pollution, and how governments around the world are not taking the issue of climate change as seriously as they should. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, recently released a report stating that if we continue emitting carbon dioxide at our current rates, that by the year 2100, carbon dioxide levels will have tripled, global temperature will rise by as much as 4.8 degrees Celsius, and sea levels could rise by as much as 82 centimeters. But how does one trace gas in the atmosphere cause all this damage? And is this even caused by humans? How do we know that carbon dioxide levels haven't been this high in the past? So, first things first, we need to understand what makes greenhouse gases important. Our planet has naturally occurring gases in its atmosphere that do a really good job at redistributing heat, keeping us at a comfortable average temperature of 14.6 degrees Celsius. Some examples of these naturally occurring gases include water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, ozone, and nitrous oxide. These gases are essential to Earth's climate, trapping enough of the sun's radiation so that liquid water can exist on the surface. If we didn't have these gases, the Earth would have an average temperature of negative 18 degrees Celsius. Liquid water and life as we know it would not exist. Now these naturally occurring greenhouse gases aren't the only ones humanity is adding to. There are other gases in our atmosphere like sulfur hexafluoride and CFCs, and these gases are insanely good at trapping heat. And so despite their low concentrations, they also have a pretty big effect on the planet's temperature. But these gases are only produced artificially through chemical industries, so government action is going to be needed to stop further emissions. The atmosphere should not be used as a public dumping site any more than the ocean should be. But what makes greenhouse gases different from other types of gases? It has to do with bond configuration. Okay, okay, I know chemistry isn't for everyone, so I'm going to try to explain this without going too in-depth. So essentially, certain gas molecules like carbon dioxide and methane have more atoms and more bonds than gases like oxygen and nitrogen, and therefore are a bit larger. These larger molecules with more bonds are really good at absorbing infrared radiation, the kind of radiation that makes things warm, and hold onto it way better than the small ones can. However, they don't like all this excess energy, and so they spit it out in a random direction. Some of it might be spat back out into space, some to another molecule, but a lot of it ends up being spat right back at Earth. Meaning that these gases stop heat from leaving our atmosphere. This is what we call the greenhouse effect. If there were no greenhouse gases, all this radiation would just float away out into space and our planet would be frozen over. See, not too much chemistry, pretty straightforward. But wait, I hear skeptics asking, we know what a greenhouse gas is, and we know carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, and we know carbon dioxide levels are increasing. But how do we know humans are responsible for this? How do we know Earth hasn't seen something like this in its geologic past? The answer lies underground. In Vostok, Antarctica, one of the driest places on Earth, scientists drilled deep into the ice to see what the air was like hundreds of thousands of years back. Let's say on average, Vostok gets one inch of snow per year. By drilling down 50,000 inches, you would be reaching snow that fell roughly 50,000 years ago. And over time, that fluffy snow has been compressed into rock-hard ice, locking tiny pockets of air in it. Scientists can measure what the composition of the air was going back almost a million years. And in those years? CO2 concentration stayed fluctuating between 180 and 280 parts per million. For reference, when this video was recorded, the current CO2 concentration was 415.68 parts per million. Nearly double what it should be in terms of geologic averages. It's pretty safe to say that this increase is not something Earth has ever seen before. These ice core samples can also be used to determine global temperature at the time when the snow fell. The science behind this is a little bit trickier though and involves isotopes, so I put a link in the description to a video that explains more about it. Scientists can use these isotope measurements to see how hot the planet was, and then compare that to CO2 levels. As you see, they go hand in hand with one another, going in and out of ice ages with fluctuating but consistent levels. Understanding how greenhouse gases work and how an increase in carbon dioxide means an increase in temperature is crucial to understanding the climate crisis. Despite what you may have heard, the science at hand is not confusing or uncertain. Our records of carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere go back a million years, 
and we have never seen levels rise this fast or this high. As each year passes, these levels rise to staggering new heights, further threatening our planet. It becomes increasingly important that friends and family understand the chemistry of how this works so no one is left confused by the fossil fuel industry or their spread of misinformation. To quote Nelson Mandela, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. In our next video, we'll be explaining how the oceans will be affected by climate change and how much they've helped us so far in slowing the heating process. Join the discussion in the comment section below, keep it respectful, and make sure to like and subscribe to support Planet Zero. Okay, bye!